Oh, stand close. <laughs> Seth and I will be side by side. This one? Uh, a loose one, a portable? Oh, one. Great. And it's on. Hello, is that better? Thank you all for coming tonight. Really appreciate you um, uh, spending an evening with us. Um, this has been a very exciting process. Um, just a quick background for those of you who, who may not uh, have been following this since January. Uh, for a while now, the City Council and City staff, as well as members of the community, the Task Force on Environmental Action, and now the Committee on the Environment, have been um, encouraging the city to take more steps towards uh, sustainability. And uh, there's been a lack of clarity about where those steps should go, how to make them most effective. And so the first step in the process uh, was uh, the city put out a request for proposals and hired Brendel Consulting Group to help us uh, focus on developing a uh, sustainability action plan focused initially around energy and greenhouse gas uh, reduction. So that contract was started at the end of January. We're about midway through. Uh, with the end product hopefully coming out in about October. Uh, tonight's meeting is the first public forum to have everyone take a look at some of the uh, recommendations and suggestions that uh, the Brendel folks, as well as members of the community, have pulled together. And I'll leave the descriptions of those to um, the consultants because I think they'll be much more concise than I can be about explaining um, the opportunities uh, that are here. Um, I first just wanted to also um, recognize a few folks that came. Maybe everybody who's a Committee on the Environment member, raise your hand. So thank you to the Committee on the Environment members uh, for coming. Um, any Task Force on Environmental Action folks here? The originators of the, some of the initial requests, thank you again. And we have a couple of council members joining us. I see Seth Grimes. I know I saw Fred Schultz. Did I miss anybody? No, thanks. And uh, City Manager Brian Kenner, if folks haven't met him, he's relatively new on board and really appreciate him joining us. And um, there will be uh, several uh, things that we're going to try out tonight, uh, one of which is um, as an encouragement for attendance. We have some giveaways that we have available. So various times through the evenings, that little number that you got will be uh, drawn out of a hat and uh, hopefully... Um, Many of you will be successful in walking out of here with a giveaway. Um, we also have, uh, we're going to try some interesting keypad polling. And in a while, Seth will deliver these little keypad polling um, devices to you so you can punch in your, your selections and choices, and it will be tallied through them. Uh, we've got several uh, uh, boards around the room that have some of the um, recommendations that we've come up with so far. Uh, and uh, as uh, the Brendel folks discuss the process, they'll um, focus on each of those different opportunities and explain a bit of um, uh, what we're looking at there. And so uh, I'll turn it over to Brendel folks. I want to introduce uh, Dave Wartman, who's um, been working with us, and Seth Jansen. So with that, thank you. All right, thanks again, everyone, for coming. Uh, I'm going to make this really brief, just an overview, and then we're going to give you all some time to go look at the posters and read about the individual strategies at your own pace. Um, so as Daryl said, we were tasked with revising the city's greenhouse gas inventory and preparing an environmental uh, sustainability action plan for the city. There's a lot of great material to work with in Tacoma Park. Uh, there's been a lot of good planning already done, so we've tried to utilize those documents and, and build on that foundation. And the guidance that we've received is to really kind of focus our initial efforts on energy and greenhouse gas emissions, that being an area the city felt like they were struggling and how to, to best assist the rest of the community in, uh, in achieving better energy efficiency. Uh, but certainly this is a broader sustainability action plan. You'll see transportation, and uh, we're open to other topics as well if uh, you feel there are high priorities that you would like to see in the plan. A little bit on kind of the structure of the process so far. So uh, from the Task Force on Environmental Action and the local, uh, uh, local action plan from way back in 2000, and uh, as well as the input from the COE, we have some pretty good direction as to what the kind of policy and topic areas are. Um, and then from the bottom up, we've been trying to build this list of strategies that you'll be looking at tonight. So 
Uh, we have the greenhouse gas baseline informing that. We've looked at the existing programs and, and offerings in the community. Um, we've done interviews with city staff and, and Maryland Energy Administration and um, also done a number of meetings with the Committee on the Environment to kind of build this list of strategies. So that's where these ideas are coming from. Um, and tonight our goal is to get your input as uh, the community as to which of these are relevant to you and uh, what else you might like to see in the plan. Uh, Daryl already touched on schedule, so I'll just skip on here to the revised greenhouse gas inventory. Uh, so this gives you a little idea of kind of how we're prioritizing and why we're focusing where we're focusing. Um, so we looked at greenhouse gas emissions for the community as a whole. This isn't just the city government, but uh, really all the activities in the community. And uh, as you can see here, residential buildings are the driving factor in greenhouse gas emissions in the community, followed by commercial buildings. And then uh, personal vehicle travel and commercial vehicle travel are the next two largest sources of greenhouse gas emissions in the community. Uh, and then you can see a number of other kind of minor contributors there. Transit um, is, is relatively low impact per, per passenger, uh, water and wastewater, and then the municipal buildings and streetlights. Uh, so as I said, the objectives tonight are to get your input on whether you think these strategies are relevant to you, whether they would be helpful to you in, in reducing the impact of your home or business in Tacoma Park. Uh, we want to get your input on how we can improve these ideas, uh, how we can expand them, m manipulate them, change them, and uh, also what other opportunities we may have missed. And I think you've probably all seen the agenda. I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, but first, a little bit about how we want to gather that input. Uh, so we have four posters here, kind of overarching strategies. So these are ideas that sort of propel sustainability or energy efficiency, greenhouse gas reductions in general. So educational programs, uh, staffing for the city to support all of these efforts, um, kind of programs that could wrap in multiple aspects of sustainability in a single program. And then you have more topic-specific areas from building energy, energy supply, and transportation covered on the other three posters. And we're going to give you time here in a minute to kind of orbit and uh, look at the strategies on those posters. And we're looking for input in a number of ways. First of all, we have dot voting. Um, so these are, everyone should have gotten two green dots on your way in. If you didn't, there's some more over by the door. Uh, we're looking for you to kind of put the dot by the strategies that you think are the highest priority, the ones that you would like to see action taken on first. And I can see... Some people have already started voting, so thank you for that. Uh, we're also looking for open-ended feedback. So at each poster is a, an envelope where you can write comments or uh, um, suggested additional strategies or really any kind of feedback you want to provide. Uh, if there's more paper by the door, feel free to uh, take as many pieces as you need, and uh, we'll take that input in those envelopes. And then we have a few people who will be circulating to answer questions. It's kind of hard to distill a strategy into a one-paragraph uh, a description on a poster. So if you have questions, uh, Dave can answer them, I can answer them, and I think uh, some of the members of the COE are also willing to, to answer questions. And then at uh, 810, we're going to take a break from milling around and, and reading about the strategies to do some keypad polling. Uh, so this is an opportunity to do kind of interactive real-time feedback about sustainability in Tacoma Park and, and kind of related to the strategies. So. Uh, uh, we'll start that here in about 20 minutes. Um, and we had planned to do two rounds of it, but we have just the right number of people, I think, to do one round and have everybody involved who wants to do that. So uh, we'll plan to do that with everybody at 810, and we'll also do the product giveaway uh, just before that here in about 10 minutes. And so the city uh, kindly uh, purchased some energy-efficient products uh, to incentivize folks to show up tonight and, uh, and hopefully to help you uh, achieve some efficiency in your home and business as a result of being here. So uh, we'll be giving these away. And as Daryl said, uh, pretty much everyone's going to be a winner tonight. So, um, And we'll talk a little bit more about what those products are when we get to that point. Um, so everybody should have received a handout at the door. If you didn't get one, there should be a few more copies. Uh, basically, the table summarizes kind of some of the key metrics about all the strategies. So we've done some evaluation for Tacoma Park to see how the different strategies might impact you here. Uh, that's what you'll find in that table. And uh, this is also kind of a graphical representation. Then if you add all these strategies up and implement all of them, this is kind of the impact that we would anticipate for Tacoma Park. So the first 
Um, this represents total greenhouse gas emissions forecast out through 2030. Uh, we're basically estimating that emissions are going to be pretty flat here in Tacoma Park. If you didn't do anything, if you didn't change any of your practices and just kept operating the way you are, uh, we would estimate emissions to stay fairly flat. The yellow bar is kind of what we would anticipate based on current regulation policies that are already in place. So this is things like federal fuel efficiency standards for vehicles, the renewable portfolio standard in Maryland that uh, designates how much renewable energy will be in your electricity mix. Uh, the state's building codes are all encompassed in that first wedge, that yellow reduction there. And then the sum of the programs that you see on these other posters make up those next three wedges um, to get you to basically a, about a 31% reduction in emissions by 2030 based on the way we've modeled the strategies to date. Um, so you can see that's, that's basically tracking with Montgomery County's goal of reducing emissions by 80% uh, below 2005 by 2050. So uh, this mix of strategies, if you were able to implement them all kind of at the level that's described on the, on the table there, that's where we would anticipate it would get you. And so with that, uh, we're going to just open it up to let people roam and vote and ask questions. And uh, we're here to help if you have any. So in about, I think we'll give you a little more time since we're started a little late here. So maybe uh, at 810, we'll do the product giveaway and the keypad polling immediately following that. Dan. Yeah, you bet. Yeah. Um, so basically, I think most of these are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the third column, targeted penetration rate. So this is that's kind of how we modeled the program. So when you're seeing the impact here, it's based on influencing the number of residents or the number of businesses indicated in that column. And that's the first number is for the first year of any particular strategy. The second number is for the tenth year of that strategy. So it kind of gives you a feeling for how much the program would grow over time. Uh, the next column then is greenhouse gas emissions in the reduction that you would see from that program in the tenth year of the program. Um, honestly, pretty much all of these look pretty pitiful in their first year because it takes some time to ramp up to get people involved. And for a lot of these, the savings actually accrue over time because you've had households or businesses that participated in year one. They still see savings in greenhouse gas reductions in year two and so on. Uh, so that's... That, yeah. The number in that column is that year, that would be the yearly reduction? Yes, the annual reduction in year 10. That's right. Correct. Yep. How are, how are we gauging them? Um, so in the inventory, we've used uh, utility data from uh, your various utilities as well as household travel survey data um, uh, for how people in Tacoma Park move around in their day-to-day their -day lives. So that's kind of the basis for the baseline. Then for these, we look at, um, we typically look at kind of model programs around the country that represent kind of what we're trying to, to approach and then uh, use the results of those programs to model what the cost and benefit might be for Tacoma Park. So it's all scaled to the number of businesses and types of businesses that you have here, for example. Um, and then the program and private costs, uh, the first value in each of those cells is, uh, well, I'll start with the program cost. The first um, one is the cost for the program in that year. Um, and those are just the, the hard costs, not the staffing costs that might be associated with that in most cases. Um, and then the second um, number is the, the savings to the city as a result of that program. So most of these programs wouldn't directly save the city any money because they're mostly outward facing. They're, they're trying to get uh, residents and businesses to participate. The second column then, private cost and savings, would be the cost to the individual residences and businesses participating and then the resulting savings that they would uh, have accrued in that year. Again, all of this in year 10. And then cost efficiency is sort of a, a way to roll all those um, uh, costs and savings up into a single metric. So uh, basically that's the, the net cost of the program, so total cost to implement minus uh, cost savings divided by the cumulative greenhouse gas reduction. So it kind of gives you an idea of how effective that program is at reducing greenhouse gas emissions. So you want a, negative a negative number means you actually saved money. So yes, a negative number is a good thing in that case. And then the last column there is an estimate of how much staffing the city might need to implement that program in that 10th year. 
Um, so obviously there will have to be some choices made, either increased staffing to support all of this or choices made about how you structure the programs and, and staff them order, in order to get all of these done. There's, there's quite a bit here. Um, so that, that's just an estimate, and, and it, uh, I would really actually emphasize that these are all preliminary results. So it's based on the first pass through the modeling, and we're looking for feedback now on uh, which programs make sense, which ones we should be more aggressive about, and, and then we'll kind of uh, retune these numbers based on that. Correct, correct. Uh, program cost is just kind of the hard cost of the program. Staffing is separate from that. Yep. Unless I've said otherwise. Right, except in the first one, yes, which is the, the staffing itself. Yeah. For your voting, do you have a poster that has something not listed that you can vote for something not listed? Because I'd rather not use my dots. Sure. Sure. Um, there's actually a poster on the door, thanks for reminding me, on the, for on the way out, where you can add additional strategies. You can also um, write in strategies and drop them in the envelope for anyone. Um, and frankly, with this size group, I'd say if you want to write another one on the poster so that other people could vote on it, I'd say go for it. Yeah, and some of that's described then on these individual boards. And if you have additional questions, like I said, we didn't get it all in there. So, uh, yeah, so basically for that one, we started to write a, a position description. And, and that's kind of what's driving the idea about how that would um, be put together. Yep. So encouraging multifamily building efficiency. I see a program cost of $139,000. Mm -hmm. What does that number come from? I mean, how does encouraging something cost so much money? Well, there's a little more to it than that. When you read the strategy, there's some incentives in there. Uh, there's staff. Um, well, the staffing is separate, but there's uh, incentives, direct outreach materials. Um, and, and so uh, we're anticipating that there would be some additional costs there beyond staffing. Yeah. One of your earlier slides about a pie chart that showed 43% residential, I think it was, and 33% mm -hmm. commercial buildings. Does the residential view split out multi-family versus single-unit uh, multi versus single-family within that? We will be able to do that. Um, we do have the data to do that now. Not right now. Yeah, we haven't done it yet. Yeah, uh, similarly, commercial, does that include the schools and also Washington? Yep. Uh, most institutional accounts, including the cities, for example, are in that commercial Unless, we, well, I take, I'm sorry, I take that back. We pulled the cities out. That one is separate. Um, but generally, institutional is wrapped up in commercial. So I am curious because the schools, um, the uh, Montgomery College, uh, the public schools are not subject to the public laws, and so on. They run themselves. Uh, do you have some kind of, maybe not on, uh, for right now, but do you have some kind of proportion of what is within the city's control versus what is in the uh, That's a good question. Uh, we could probably work toward that, but we don't have that now. We do have um, one of the strategies did look specifically at reaching out to those institutions to try to get them a bit more engaged in um, energy efficiency. And so there are specific savings associated with energy efficiency actions in those buildings. Yeah. Any other questions before we give you some time to look around? Yeah. Yeah, um, so from what we're seeing, the, the standard rate offering from PEPCO is uh, on the order, I don't remember the exact numbers off the top of my head, but I want to say it's 11 to 12 cents per kilowatt hour, and it's just a small premium that you pay to, in order to get wind energy through a provider like Clean Currents. Okay, great. Yeah, and really, please do uh, give us any suggestions you have. Um, written is great because otherwise I'll have trouble tracking them all tonight. Um, but certainly I have cards. You can follow up with me afterwards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We didn't measure it, um, but we did give it some thought. The EPA actually um, has done some, well, their, their peer suggestions or their uh, scientific study suggestions are that uh, Compost piles that are well managed don't generate any significant amount of methane. 
Now, that's not really being managed as a true compost pile in a lot of senses, so there may be some methane there, but it's likely pretty negligible uh, relative to the emissions that you're saving anyway by collecting that material here as opposed to trucking it further away. But we can take a closer look at that if there's, if there's concern about it. All right. Well, thanks for all the questions, and uh, let us know if you have others. Um, we were thinking about doing a little bit of a discussion at the end if people stick around just since we have a fairly small crowd. Okay. okay. So has anyone used these before, done keypad polling? Okay. So it's kind of a fun exercise, and really what this is meant to do is uh, it's, it's all completely anonymous, um, but we do compile uh, results, and it's kind of interesting to see what your neighbors or your uh, other folks in your community think about some of these questions. We've got uh, about 12 or so questions here. Some of them are kind of demographic in nature, which allows us to then do some cross-tabulation with some of the other questions, and then the other ones are related uh, more to the sp uh, strategies that we've, um, we've developed here. So um, the keypads you have uh, will not work outside this room for any purpose, so please don't walk away with them. We we'd like them back very much when you're done. Um, basically, I'm going to run through a PowerPoint that will uh, ask a series of questions, and then you'll get to see the results after you've all voted um, up on the screen. Um, in terms of actually voting, so if, if it's a single vote, um, I'll open the voting. You'll get to make your selection, and then the voting will close. Um, if you goof and you want to change your vote, so if you hit a two but you meant a four, it's whatever the last uh, vote you put in before the voting closes. That's what gets recorded. And then you'll see the results put up here. Um, in a couple of cases, there are some that are kind of, you can vote for more than one 
uh, category, and, and you'll see those as we go along. So, any questions? You ready to get going? So it's pretty straightforward. The pad has got 1 through 10 on it, and you'll see the selections up here, and you'll get to, to um, make your selection as we go through. So to get things started off, uh, question one is, in what neighborhood do you live? And we had to collapse some of the neighborhoods here because we only have um, 10 selections we can make. So go ahead and make your selection. You'll see at the bottom of the screen here um, the tabulation as we go. So we've got 22 of you voted so far. We should get up to 29. Anybody else want to vote? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close that. We should have 29. There are 29 pads, so two people didn't vote for whatever reason. Right, you just press the number. Right. So there's your distribution. Oh, this screen? I don't know if this comes down anymore. No, it doesn't come down anymore. Yeah, I think on the side screens it's showing up a little better. Okay, so in what type of home or unit do you live? Uh, a single family home you own, multifamily unit you own, single family you rent, multifamily you rent, in a shoe or other? All right, we've got all 29 there. So everybody's keypads are working. So most of you in single family homes you own, followed by multifamily units you rent, and multifamily units you own. Nobody lives in a shoe. <laughs> all right, question three, where do you work? Do you work in Tacoma Park? outside of Tacoma Park. I'm retired, I don't work at the moment, I'm on perpetual vacation. Everybody voted? I think it's just not, not counting them. We have, we have 28 responses so far. Okay, I'm going to close that one. So, 57% work outside of Tacoma Park, 25% in Tacoma Park. Do you own a business in Tacoma Park? Yes or no? One more person, there we go. So 34% of you do own a business. Okay, now we get into a few more questions about uh, some of the, the strategies that we're looking at in a little more detail. So question five, in which of PEPCO's energy efficiency programs have you participated, either as a business or a resident? My account program, home energy checkup. Well, I suppose if you if you have not had a quick home energy checkup, that's probably pretty straightforward, right? Yeah. 
their smart meter program. It allows you access to your residential electricity use data through a web-based account. Um, the quick home energy checkup is uh, a technician that comes out to your house, does a quick energy checkup and some direct install of efficient equipment. Um, three is more just generic to capture if you have participated in a program and earned a rebate, uh, one of their other programs. And four, obviously, haven't participated at all. Got a few more votes out there. Anybody else want to vote? OK, I'm going to go ahead and close that one. So 59% have not participated in any program. 44% in a program where you earned a rebate far fewer in my account or the quick home energy checkup. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's over 100% because there are multiple answers to this one. Question six, would a sustainability or energy coach be a useful resource for completing projects in your home or business? So that's one of the strategies that's up here under overarching strategies. Yes, no, or not sure. A few more votes out there. OK, we'll go ahead and close that one. Forty-eight percent said yes. Nineteen percent said no. Thirty-three are not sure. Question seven: Which of the following do you have installed in your home? Pick all that apply: compact, compact fluorescents or LED lights, smart power strips. You should say yes to all these after tonight, if you, with your prizes, programmable thermostats or none of these. Of course, this is all anonymous, so if you want to you know, make an anonymous confession that you don't have LED lights or compact fluorescents, that's okay. Ninety-three percent have compact fluorescents or LED lights. Fifty-two percent, smart power strips. Sixty-two percent, programmable thermostats. What's that? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, this is actually a, a, a complex question. I know Seth's been looking into um, whether or not this would even be feasible. But um, yeah, the, this came up in the COE uh, in the last couple of weeks, and we wanted to kind of get feedback on whether it's of interest or not. But we agree the mechanism is not clear. So. Regardless of feasibility, we thought it would be interesting just to know uh, if people would support attacks on greenhouse gas emissions in Tacoma Park. Okay, we'll go ahead and close that one. So, so three is 50%, not sure. And the other two, yes and no, 25% split. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see anything definitive there. Qu Question nine. Would you be willing to participate in a voluntary effort to save energy in your neighborhood by any of the following? Pick all that apply knocking on doors in your neighborhood to get out the word, 
getting together with neighbors uh, to group purchase and install energy efficient equipment, hosting a living room chat about uh, energy, and being part of a tiered program to, the, to some of the uh, ideas we have up here, uh, being part of a tiered program that recognizes homes or businesses for different levels of energy saving accomplishments. Okay, we're going to go ahead and close that one. <laughs> so 74% would be willing to get together with groups to do uh, installs and purchase of energy efficient equipment. 15% would be willing to knock on doors. 48% host a living room chat. 70% being part of a tiered program. So you're not, you're not door knockers. I, I know. I, I can relate. Um, next question. Do you currently use or purchase renewable energy for your home or business? And would you consider paying extra to participate in a community solar project? So I know one of the challenges here in Tacoma Park is you've got a lot of tree cover. And so um, one of the potential strategies is to look at some sort of uh, community-oriented uh, solar program. So uh, pick the one choice that uh, applies best. You do not use or purchase renewable energy now, but you would be willing to pay extra. Okay. Pick your favorite one, right? Um, it would, yeah, it would take a little bit to go and change that. Anybody else want to vote? Okay, we'll go ahead and close that one. So 50% do not use or purchase renewable energy and would pay extra. 36% do purchase or use renewable energy and would pay extra. So you think that answer would be significantly different between residents and businesses. Right. Is that one where we could do a cross tab with the, do you own a business or not? Well, potentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, uh, home stretch here. Which of the following would help you reduce your trips by car? Pick all that apply. So this gets at some of the transportation strategies we're looking at. Uh, carpooling tools, more local car sharing options, better bicycling infrastructure, local circulator, neighborhood transportation challenge, or none of these would help. Pick all that apply. bit of evidence that there's a slight reduction because there's that small minority that actually won't own a car and they'll just use the car sharing as their sole need of a vehicle so there is a, a very small reduction associated okay we'll close that one. Oh, got 29 there okay So, better bicycling infrastructure and linkages and a local circulator shuttle. The two that kind of came out at the top. That's interesting. Okay. That was the last question. So, I don't know if that uh, revealed any surprises or aha moments, but thanks for participating. And, um, again, please return the keypads. So Seth, we have a few extra minutes. Are we just going to let people circulate again, or yeah, I'd ask say questions? Get your last minute voting in. If you have any other questions, we're happy to hang out for a little bit and answer.
couple of thoughts. Um, we'll put this information on the city's website. If you haven't uh, gone to the city's website, we do have all the previous information, um, including the initial RFP uh, that the city put out for um, the sustainability energy request and a bunch of other details. And so this, these results and, and the strategies will be available on the city's websites. We'll also um, tally up the green dot polls and, and put that information out so people can uh, check in to see. I mean, we've got a little bit of a visual. You can put this up there, too. Uh, yeah, we'll do the keypad polling information as well, um, just as a uh, kind of a, a note to the participation this evening. And, um, you know, if other ideas or questions come to you, feel free to uh, reach out to either myself or, or Nina, Nima. Um, and we can give email addresses, and we'll uh, filter that information on back through to Brendel Group. And again, uh, this information will be coming back um, refined in a final report to the council that will probably take place in September or October. And so we welcome your input. If other ideas come up or, or thoughts that you have, please share them with us. And um, if there's neighbors or community members that you know of that you think would be interested in this, we encourage you to point them towards the city's website or towards the city staff, and we'd love to get them involved. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, thanks, everyone, for coming out tonight. Appreciate it.